Um, yeah, I, so um, uh, I'm, I'm from uh, Dynex Computing and also a PhD student in University of Tokyo. And today I talk about using QCG programming for microarchitecture research. Okay, um, so conventional TCG is used for uh, emulating um, some kind of hardware design to um, learn a, a program designed for something defined for host. So for example, you can use it for cross development or sometimes for also for retro hobby computing. And this has some uh, common goal that is to emulate fixed hardware design fast for software. However, um, today I talk about a somewhat different uh, kind of use case. Uh, in this talk, I talk about microarchitecture research, that is to optimize design of microprocessor, in other words, microarchitecture. Uh, in, in this talk, our goal is to simulate various hardware designs instead of fixed hardware design and average their performance instead of executing as fast as possible. And the idea for using uh, TCG for microarchitecture research is to generate software execution traces with a CCG plugin and fit them to simulate the modeling hardware designs. Uh, before talking about how I use TCG plugin for microarchitecture, let me uh, describe microarchitecture research uh, and its motivation. Uh, the reason to study microarchitecture is to, uh, in short, it is to export more parallelism. However, I dig it into the big background further. And there is a one big assumption called Moore's law. Um, it says the number of transistor doubles for every two years. That's quite fast pace. And it's kind of has, it, and this Moore's law kind of has been showing down a bit, but has not stopped yet. So we are getting more and more transistors. Um, the increased number of transistors and a smaller transistor actually resulted in direct performance improvement in the past, like before 2006. Uh, the smaller transistors allowed to uh, increase the clock frequency. Uh, I, so everything got just faster for each technical generation. And that was a really good day, but uh, it is unfortunately no longer true. Um, transistors too small result in something called current leakage and that caused uh, stopping this clock frequency increase. So uh, we can no longer rely on general scaling for performance improvement. Still, Moore's law is still alive. So um, we are getting more and more transistors. So we somehow need to find a way to use these extra transistors. Um, so um, the, therefore, uh, that's, therefore, uh, we need to exploit these transistors with parism. That's the um, main idea of microarchitecture um, design. However, there's still um, uh, another challenge called Amdahl's law. So it says, uh, if we could parallelize some portion of program execution, some small part of execution cannot be parallelized, can bottleneck the overall performance. And the graph on the right side says, I mean, if you could parallelize 90% of program execution, the 10% will, re will eventually bottleneck the overall performance. And so um, we need to try very hard to uh, exploit parallelism as much as possible. And well, that's not, that's not possible just uh, in just by optimizing software or hardware. We actually need both approaches. With software approaches, we can ex expose parallelism in program to hardware. For example, you can use, you can have multiple threads um, that are independent units of execution can, that can be executed in parallel. Or you can also use factorization, that is to apply one operation to multiple data. Uh, with, with this exposed parism, how do we utilize uh, them and um, actually contribute to performance? So 
for example, uh, for mud setting, hardware can use this multiple threads, it's multiple core, or having multiple threads in one core. For vectorization, we can have something called symmetry units that, uh, that has uh, multiple um, symmetric execution un functional units that can process one instruction into, that can apply one instruction to multiple data. And even if software doesn't provide, doesn't use these features, we can still have something called out of the execution that uh, executes, that is to execute independent instructions in parallel. With these hardware approaches and software approaches combined, we can file with umbrella code law and maximize parallelism. For this purpose, it is essential to, uh, for this purpose, uh, it is essential to understand how software behave and expose parallelism uh, uh, to improve microarchitecture. Um, so that's about the motivation for microarchitecture research. Now I talk about uh, actually how we can study microarchitecture. Um, but the main challenge of microarchitecture research is just microarchitecture is too complex to optimize at once. Um, maybe a processor just executes instructions to pop top to bottom and does it, but such execution is quite inefficient. So um, we introduce a concept, concept uh, called superscale and pipeline. The pipeline execution divides instruction execution into multiple stages and uh, that uh, and just enables to execute instructions at different stage in parallel and ex utilize all of the components responsible for different stages in and we can also execute instructions uh, at the same stage using superscalar mechanism Superscale mechanism is to have multiple execution units for one stage, and that ex improves that improves parallelism further. Uh, but superscale pipeline is not uh, supervised. It also has some challenge. Uh, so sometimes parallelization is not possible because of dependencies among instructions and other reasons. To overcome this challenge, real world processor makes guesses to uh, exploit potential parallelization opportunities. And that kind of guesses happens everywhere. And we have uh, parallelization and prediction recovery me mechanism have everywhere. So that complicates everything. So we cannot actually optimize everything at once. Um, for this reason, um, we need Shumita. Um, uh, Shumita is not a layer of hardware design, but it is, uh, f it focuses on estimating execution time and sometimes also power and area usage. And with Shumita, you can omit uh, details you don't care about from the Shumita. So uh, instead of uh, having whole complete uh, microarchitecture design, instead you can focus on a component you are currently optimizing. Um, for example, um, my uh, modern processor has floating point asymmetrics, but floating point asymmetrics is a very complex piece and most people don't understand. Um, but with Chimulator, um, instead of actually performing, having floating point as computation unit, you can instead add, just add some constant latency when you are in contra floating point uh, Computation. So that makes uh, microarchitecture research uh, much easier. However, omitting such details means um, simulator will not have fun will not be functional. So somehow we need to add the functional aspect from elsewhere. Um, is simulator is also slow. Like it it can take whole benchmark execution. Um, uh, it can take months or years to execute whole benchmark. So it is not appropriate to uh, learn a whole 
to simulate whole program execution. Um, to overcome these challenges, and so finally, uh, we get uh, we get a functional emulator to we use functional emulator to uh, generate execution traces. Um, so instead of um, implementing comp every computational unit in simulator, we can instead use a functional emulator can and gather traces that characterize software. And hardware simulator can follow such traces and some up latency uh, for computations observed in tr traces. We can also limit the scope to generate traces to uh, limit uh, simulation time. And there are two called SimPoint that automatically finds regions of interest that characterize program execution well. Um, so using this SimPoint, we can um, have reasonable execution simulation time. Um, yeah. And conventionally, uh, there are multiple, uh, there are some few ways uh, for generating traces, but they all have some problems with um, microarchitecture research. Uh, a common method to instrument program is to use static instrumentation by compiler. In these days, um, many people use LLVM for this purpose. Uh, it works well for other um, purposes other than market research, but unfortunately, we can't use this approach because it uh, actually alters the instruction stream that's, uh, and that's uh, incompatible with the goal of market research. The uh, uh, alternative uh, solution is to have dynamic instrumentation that uses a uh, normal binary and instrument at runtime. Uh, for microarchitecture research, it is, pop, uh, it is popular to use interpin for this purpose. However, um, dynamic instrumentation has another problem. Uh, dynamic instrumentation uh, exposes the underlying instruction set of the host so it is typically x86, and x86 is just too complex to interpret, and you don't really want, you will not want to uh, deal with this instruction set in simulator. So um, yeah, it's definitely better to avoid it. And using host instruction set also means it is hard to extend the instruction set, so it limits the scope of market research. Finally, um, the last option is re reference interpreter. Uh, for example, RISC V has a reference interpreter called Spike. And, but uh, such interpreter is, uh, has also a number of problems. They are often slow, architecture specific, inflexible, have limited user space support, and had limited or complicated embedded debugger setup. But um, TCG unfortunately solves all of the different problems. TCG is so fast and supports various architectures. Um, especially, it's important to have RISC V that is open and extensive instruction set um, for microarchitecture research. And it also even has better extension that is also, that also provides uh, various interesting topics for microarchitecture research. Um, TCG has great user space emulation. And can works with JDB, so it's it's so easy to debug. And finally, TCG plugins provide infrastructure to generate enough information for market research. Um, next, I discuss the requirements Shimmer uh, has for traces. Mm. Traces need to ha capture. Uh, enough states uh, to simulate. Uh, most, the most basic uh, information is program counter. And next registers, and, and the last one is memory. Uh, we up, up shamed a register API uh, to, um, APIs to read registers, and this is available since 9.0, so uh, we can ha have register API ready. Uh, program counter is the most trivial one, so it's also for DG. And uh, for memory, uh, I, 
I was going to say it can only access uh, data that was charged in execution. Uh, but well, uh, the last presentation talked about new API to read uh, object virtual address. So um, that means we also have good API for memory reading. Um, so we can generate any kind of in information we need for uh, market exchange simulation. Uh, we can um, gather that information at a different point of execution. First, uh, we can generate traces at the beginning of the execution that can that allow to omit program loading from the simulator. And another option is to generate traces after system calls to that allows to omit system call implementation. And finally, um, you can also um, instrument all instruction. That may be a bit uh, inefficient and have different bigger traces, but it all allows to omit every computation from simulator. Um, then um, I took, uh, I introduced um, a shell. Um, there was use case in use case of TCC and uh, market share research. Uh, in this market share research, I used a simulator called Sniper. And I targeted risk five Linux user space and I run experiments on x 6 host. And I used two benchmark series. The first one is spec CPU that uh, has generic workloads, and this is the second one is graph benchmark series that has that is a graph benchmark series. Sniper uses interpin uh, default tracer, but it is incompatible with Risk Five, so uh, it has integration with Spike, the reference emulator of Risk Five. But unfortunately, it turns out uh, Spike is just too slow to run gap benchmark suite. So it is not appropriate for our use case. So instead of using Interpin or Spike, we object for TCG plugins. The first one is basic block generator. Uh, we use two TCG plugins. The first one is basic block generator, BBB. Um, well, uh, that is to uh, capture uh, capture basic block execution count and characterize software execution. And SimPoint can consume this information to find the regions that characterize program execution best. And this basic block generator need, learns before identifying regions of interest. So it needs to learn for the four programs, so it needs to be learned fast. Uh, Fortunately, um, we had a new APIs called co conditional callbacks that allows to instrument on uh, that allows to instrument only when necessary. So this allowed uh, fast execution of basic block generator, and this API is also available since 9.1. Um, and I appreciate uh, this basic block generator of, uh, to up. I, I posted basic block generator to mailing list for upstreaming. This, well, this plugin was first developed by a researcher in Naga University and named Yocha Nada, and I refined it for upstreaming, and it's um, almost ready for magic. And with this basic block generator and same point, we can get simulation points that provides uh, regions to uh, actually simulate. So for this simulation points, uh, we generate, we actually generate traces using a sniper front plugin. This trace is program, program contract and register for each instruction. Uh, instead of using MMR API, it infers memory content from registers to uh, match uh, instruction operand and memory data. As a result, uh, I managed to learn all gap branch max state until now, unlike Spike, and it also passed all CPUs, spec CPU 
benchmarks, also it requires few fixes. These fixes are also upstream. So today, the latest game has everything we need in upstream. And it provides insights like execution time, bottleneck analysis, and pipeline execution breakdown. Um, next, I discuss about um, micro execution speculation. Um, so TCG plugin works very well, but there is some kind, some unresolved uh, situation. Micro execution speculation is a uh, execution is guesses made by market architecture. Uh, there are two examples I present here. First one is speculative execution that is based on branch prediction and arrows early execution of instructions after branches. However, it, speculative execution results, sometimes results in wrong instruction execution. The other kind of speculation is made by proof feature. Proof feature guesses the region of memory in the process of where access and field caches. And there are some complex prefecture example called inter memory prefecture. It uh, instead it 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 also calls field caches, but instead of just filling caches, it uses the data read from memory to find more pointers to dereference. And this market speculation matters uh, even. Though they are not present in traces, traces do not contain any kind of market share details. So um, there is no kind of speculation uh, aspect. However, this speculation matters for security and performance. Uh, first, it enables for security it enables side or cobalt channel attacks. Speculative execution is exported by infamous spectra, and the indirect memory prefecture in AppleSQ was exported with attack named GoFetch. And it also affects performance since, well, it is, speculation is made to improve performance. Uh, sometimes it can, uh, even, uh, it can sometimes uh, degrade performance when there is another hardware threat in, in core uh, because that it uh, uh, wastes execution resource. So uh, speculative, micro architecture speculation quite matters for uh, micro architecture research. Uh, then let's think about uh, the requirements such speculation poses. Um, speculation, first, indirect memory prefecture. Um, indirect memory prefecture needs to read memory, access, not access in real execution. Um, so get, the TCG plugin used to uh, on, have only eta places to read, read to record ac only access to memory, so that was not um, insufficient. Uh, but well, as uh, as mentioned in the previous presentation, it seems we are now getting a new in interface to read up to virtual address. So I hope. So I think that API will solve this problem, and now we should be able to implement internal memory prefecture with KM uh, TCG plugin. Uh, uh, it should be also noted dumping all memory is not an option because it just consumes too much data. Um, gap benchmarks it consumes a lot of memory, so it is not uh, appropriate for that benchmark stage. And next, uh, I talk about speculative execution. For speculative execution, we need to control program counter to execute wrong passes. And it is also necessary to have checkpoint restore to restore the state after wrong execution. And this checkpoint restore is not is different from usual normal checkpoint restore. Normal checkpoint restore dumps whole map states, so it is very slow. But checkpoint restore for speculative execution needs to be real fast. But uh, it captures very small uh, interval, so it that can uh, that also allows a uh, more efficient implementation. Um, these requirements for microarchitecture speculation is very specific to microarchitecture, so uh, we, so it is not appropriate to implement all of this uh, uh, all of this complexity in Kim, and instead so. It is more natural to let the simulator uh, drive execution. 
And in the past, we had something called libgame, but it, it is now removed. It took too much internal details and not very used, easy to use. And there is an uh, out of tree game fork called Unicorn, but it is, yeah, out of tree. So, uh, so why don't you have an uh, entry uh, solution? So, yeah, uh, I don't know what, not, uh, what, what I just gave most. Well, basically, we only need to model processor instead of exposing all the uh, features like device emulation for system emulation or system call emulation. So, um, omitting those details can result in much smaller interface that is more easier to use and easier to maintain. So this is conclusion. First, my architecture is my, it matters in this days. Uh, in days that has more as low without general scaling. And trust based simulation is significant in as such microarchitecture research. And this is his idea for actually generating these traces. Over microarchitecture speculation remains as an open problem. So I'm suggest you think I came as a library that has got internal details and instead provide minimal API for uh, modeling processor aspect only. And that it, yeah. Thank you, well, th thank you for, for this presentation. It, uh, it was really interesting. Um, how do you think, um, if, if you start having uh, something like QMU TCG as a, as a library, mm -hmm. and you start exposing bits of the CPU, how do you envisage modeling things like TLBs that are, I mean, they exist in the CPU, but they mm -hmm. don't have an architectural shape? So how, how do you, and, and that it massively influences your, your, your microarchitecture, of course. So how do you envisage modeling those and exposing them to, mm -hmm. to, to, to the rest of the infrastructure in a, in a way that makes it usable and still useful for, in general? Well, I think uh, such um, aspect that TLB will be, um, we have many um, application specific uh, concerns. So I think it's kind of, Unlikely to um, make sense to offer to offload such kind of aspect to QM. Instead, it would be it would make more sense to implement TLB or more architecture specific and complicated stuff in simulator instead of having um, instead of using QM. Um, well, for my for my usage, well. I'm only concerned with user space emulation, so I don't really interested. In, I'm not really interested in TLB. Yeah. So yeah, for this user space emulation purpose, uh, it's not necessary to have TLB or such more such um, durable architecture specific uh, concept. So there is also the story of caching. So see, performance for microarchitectures varies a lot mm -hmm. on how much you can cache. What's your cache replacement strategy? Mm -hmm. So how do you plan to model that as part of this? Well, that's also a responsibility of simulator. So simulator records access to memory region and because what region is hot and what region is cold. Yes, yeah, so that is also handled in Shimmerta. Hi. Uh, so two comments. So I think one thing is that there's there's probably a spectrum where if all you need to do is extract some information mm -hmm. and you don't actually need a full micro architectural simulation, then uh, the, the the QMU plugins uh, you know framework uh, is very good for that. But then. As we see in your presentation, like 
as you need to go deeper and deeper and do deeper simulation, like for speculative execution, mm -hmm. uh-oh, now I need an interpreter because I need to go ahead and actually uh, be able to simulate what's going to uh, happen. Um, at the end of the day, then you end up writing a micro-architectural simulator again, and you have all the stuff. Do you see what I mean? Because uh, you, can, yeah. you can save a lot of work, but that only works when you only need a bit of information. And then when you need a lot, it seems like you'll end up with having a full micro-architectural simulator that's doing cycles and, and, and all the caches and all the internal stuff. Well, I still think uh, hooks would be enough. So, for example, if you have some uh, new instruction, you can just chop undefined instruction exception and implement uh, s such new instructions in Shimura and then pass the execution back to KMU. And I think that would be enough for yeah, uh, having more uh, having more aspects that is not present in KMU. Yes. Yes, I think it depends how deep your microarchitectural simulation yeah. has to go. If you design completely defined instruction sets that is for example, completely defined from risk five or the arm, then that will be trouble. And you will have need your own um, and functional emulator, I think. The other comment I wanted to make was about QMU as a library because it has come up many times over the mm -hmm. years. And I think often what happens is that someone proposes it who is hasn't been involved in QMU for a long time. You have, though. You, you have. <laughs> You've been contributing yeah. to QMU. So usually uh, I think the incentives of when that happens is that the core QMU community says, well, that's not really what we want to do. We want to have... Uh, we don't want public APIs that are stable. We don't want to be a library because it just would make life harder for us. Mm -hmm. And then the person who's proposing it says, yeah, and I don't really want to be a maintainer either. So, so then it never happens. Um, that could change, though. It's just about whether there is actually the, enough of a community around it to maintain mm -hmm. it. I don't know if anyone is fundamentally against it. It's just that it never happened because the incentives haven't been right in the past. I, that's my view on that. Yeah, and fortunately these days we have GDB stuff and uh, TCG plugin that has some common aspect, like uh, register APIs can be used for this uh, library too. So I hope the extra complexity needed for TCG um, KMS library can be minimized using TCG plugin code and database. Thank you.